I don't know how to start this video. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'll be talking about my first thoughts on Sorry to Bother You. And I know I'm late on this. Um, I missed this movie coming out. Uh, I saw the trailer when it first came out, and then nothing. So I didn't know when it came out. I completely missed it. And then after I heard I missed it, I assumed that... Maybe it wasn't that good, but some people had said it was pretty good, so I decided that I wanted to check it out. I need to do more research for my upcoming top 10 movies of 2018 list anyway, see what movies would make that list. So I went ahead and watched this movie, and, um, it was a movie. <laughs> it's, um, just a forewarning, um, if you haven't seen this movie yet, I'm gonna not have a whole lot to say before I get into spoilers, so it's gonna be pretty quick. But what I can say is, it was really good for what it was. Um, I thought the acting was really good, I thought that the character chemistry was great, I thought the dialogue was really well written, I really enjoyed all of that. Um, okay, one thing, um, you know, in the in the trailer you see the white voice joke, and that was funny, it was, but they did use it a lot, and it kind of got less funny each time they used it, and you did notice that it was just very poorly dubbed, and it's not like it was a bad joke, it was a good joke, it just wasn't very well executed, the problem being like, you not, obviously it's dubbed over, obviously, but it gets to the point where their lips aren't synced at all at times, and you can even tell they're not even saying the right words at times. And it's just, it got frustrating because, like, I'm supposed to be suspending disbelief, but it's hard to when it's so obviously not real. So, I mean, that got a little old. Um, but overall, it was hilarious. I laughed out loud several times. I was watching it by myself, and I, I was still laughing. Um, might be the funniest movie I've seen this year. It was really funny. And I've seen some funny movies this year. This is... Probably the funniest one I've seen, so, yeah, for whatever that's worth, it's great. Um, but if you haven't seen it yet, don't look up anything. Um, just go into it with whatever expectations you already have, but also have an open mind, because it might not be what you're expecting, and if it turns out to be what you're expecting, then, I mean, good for you. <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely... It's a bit different than what I expected, I'll put it that way. So, um, but yeah, don't look up any spoilers, don't do any of that. Just go ahead and watch it and go into it not knowing anything. That's what I did, and I'm really glad I did. If I had known any spoilers ahead of time, it may have ruined it for me. So go ahead and just don't know anything. And I think, I mean, okay, I don't want to promise that you'll enjoy it, but if you like this kind of movie, you're going to love it, and if you don't, <laughs> that's a movie. Um, so yeah, that's honestly all I have for the spoiler-free stuff, so go ahead and stop watching this video here because I'm going to move over to spoilers, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe first. It helps me out a lot. Thanks, guys. Bye. So. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> all right, so um, if you don't know the plot yet, I don't know why you're still watching this video because I told you not to, but... Um, Basically, the main character is Cassius Green. He works for a telemarketing company, um, and he's promised uh, to be able to get to a higher level of marketing if he does well enough. And lo and behold, he does, using his white voice that he's very good at. Um, he gets up to this higher rank, where he now gets to sell more things. And that is people. There's this whole other side business called... Uh, carefree or something like that um, where it's essentially slavery essentially you're you're working manual labor in return for housing and food but it's kind of like a rigged system where you're just trapped in for life and he finds that he's being used for that but he's getting paid lots and lots of money and he decides it's worth it so he keeps on doing it um, and then it progresses a little bit further and he gets to see the behind the scenes where they're doing genetic engineering. And that genetic engineering is combining people with horses, because why not? <laughs> so, um, this movie, like I said, it's hilarious. It's also um, a political commentary. And I went into it thinking it would be a political commentary. Um, I thought it might have to do with race and all that stuff, being an African-American living in a white America, and it was that to an extent, 
but not in the way I thought. It went above and beyond that. It kind of had the little guy versus the big man mentality. And in this, it demonstrates it with big business. I think it almost works better, though, uh, in big government. And I think that might have been what it's alluding to, uh, referring to the government. I'm not sure if that's what they're going for, but it definitely works in the same analogy. In fact, in my mind, it works better because I tend to think that big government's worse than big business because I think big business actually does a lot of good, but that's beside the point. That's political. Just avoid that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's a bizarre movie. And honestly, I wasn't planning on doing first thoughts, but I had to talk about it. Um, like I said, I was watching it by myself, and I had nobody to bounce my ideas off of, so I wanted to just bounce them off you guys, and hopefully other people have seen it, they can comment back and forth, and we can talk about it, but wow, this was an odd movie, and I really, really wanted to love it, ended up really, really liking it, um, and maybe the more I sit on it, maybe I'll like it more, maybe I'll like it less, I don't know yet, I haven't fully wrapped my head around it, because... It's bizarre. It's really weird. And it was uneven. Like, there was some really phenomenal parts, and then there was other parts that weren't so good. So, we'll tackle my least favorite part. My least favorite part in this movie is actually Tessa Thompson, which is saying something because I love her. She's great. I've loved her in everything I've seen her in. I first saw her in Creed. She was phenomenal in that, and I've been a fan ever since. Found her in other movies. Um, I'm forgetting what it was now, but I saw this indie movie with her in it, and it was great. Oh. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. But, um, yeah, her character was pointless in this. So, uh, she's um, Cassius Green's girlfriend. And so he is kind of like, I don't know what personality type you'd say he is, but at first he's just, you know, not really going anywhere with life, but kind of almost because he feels like everything's pointless. And so she's more or less an activist where she's trying to inspire change. Um, but she's also an artist, um, so one of the ways that she always talks about expressing uh, change and wanting to do change is um, through her art. And so eventually we get to see her art, and her art's really dumb. Like, and I'm not the hugest fan of modern art to begin with, but this is dumb. She has this uh, exhibit where she's got all her paintings and statues and stuff and that's cool and it's whatever you don't really get to see much of it but then she does a live performance where she gets up and she's practically naked um, and she starts reciting a line over and over and over again while people are throwing empty like uh, bullet shells uh, phones and water balloons full of blood at her and it's supposed to be a protest art piece or something and it's like what are you doing and why like she kind of her whole character is like well you gotta inspire change she doesn't do anything important in this entire movie so it really kind of makes her whole character seem like a hypocrite and it kind of throws the whole movie out of balance because a lot of the characters that she revolves around with their whole group is kind of hypocrites so you see like the you have several scenes where people are protesting and they're protesting against the big business and they're all kind of hypocrites in a way and I don't know this movie obviously I think came across with a harsh bias of being anti um, big business anti government and I get it I agree with a lot of it I don't agree with all of it so seeing it as centrist as I can um, it was definitely biased in one way. They they show um, the bad guys as all bad, and they show the good guys as supposedly all good, but yet there's hypocrisy there that doesn't make sense. I don't know if that was on purpose. I feel like it wasn't. If it was, really good job because I didn't pick up on it being intentional. Um, and I get it. It's a satire. It is a satire. It actually reminded me a lot of Get Out in some ways. I felt like it was inspired by that. I don't know that it was, but it felt a lot like that. And um, so... I get it, it's a satire, it's supposed to blow things out of proportion, but really, ultimately, these characters that were supposed to be protesting and doing good accomplished almost nothing. And nothing even came out of it until the very end of the movie, which is a whole different topic because that's when Cassius Green came back and he was helping and the horse people came in. And the point of that was the 
people you use and the people you abuse and the the people that you are using for your personal gain will eventually turn back on you. It's it's rage against the machine. It's it's the little guy against the big guy. It's the whole motif. It's that's been around forever, you know. And so I got that part and that worked. But the rest of the time it's stupid. And then you see like I mean it's all supposed to be peaceful protesting for the most part. I mean they throw some stuff, but that's it. And then they're showing, like, the riot police going in and beating them up while they're peacefully protesting. It's like, that's not how it works. The riot police don't attack. They just stand there until given a reason to retaliate. But, okay, you let your political bias in on that a little bit, so that's frustrating. Um, because if you're going to satirize something, I would rather there not be a bias involved. And there was obvious bias in this, so there's a little bit of unevenness there. However... All around, that's my only real issue with this, other than the bad lip-syncing. Other than that, we've got some really good commentary where we're talking about how, like, obviously, like I said, people lose sight of what matters when they have own personal gain. And that's a big topic, because we have Cassius Green constantly fighting between he wants to better himself so that he can then better the people around him in theory, or is he going to stick it out with the people as they do their own thing? And he also has a really good line in there that I think gets brushed on the rug a little bit, where he goes, I'm not abandoning you just because I'm bettering myself. He said, my betterment has nothing to do with you. And that was a really good line that I felt like got immediately swiped to the side because it was immediately followed by a couple of jokes, which were hilarious. But it was a really good commentary at times and hilariously done. So of course the bad guy's overblown, of course, the good guys are supposed to be heroic, and for the most part it worked. I'm going to say 90% of the time it worked. Honestly, that's why the whole thing falls back on Tessa Thompson's character being pointless, because it really was frustrating, because I wanted the whole dynamic to work, and for the most part it did, but when you have this supposed dynamic character be completely pointless, and her whole thing is... it's, it's ruined. It becomes ruined, especially when you've got this uh, other character, Squeeze, I, this is his nickname. You bring him in and there's a whole love triangle for a minute. That was pointless. And it just made me lose more respect for Tessa Thompson's character again because she and Cassius Green break up for a minute and she's using that minute to try and make him jealous by flirting with that guy in front of him and asking, well, she says, hey, I slept with a guy. Do you want to know who it is? And she's like, trying to manipulate him, so she's supposed to be like the good character, but there's nothing really good about her. And then at the end, she's no more redeemed. She doesn't do anything to redeem herself because it's like she doesn't need to in the writer's and director's eyes, but from my perspective, she wasn't a good character, and I almost feel like Cassius Green was a worse character than when he started, but by the end of the movie, he was better than her, so why is he still with her? And that was frustrating to me. So... I'm torn, as you can tell, because the comedy was great, the majority of the satire was great, I really enjoyed the writing of it, like I mentioned in the pre-spoilers part, the character chemistry, the dialogue was really good, and I can't get past just the comedic timing of it was awesome. You'd have serious moment, serious moment, and then a little quick joke. Um, my favorite um, joke that comes to mind is Cassius and his best friend, I'm forgetting his name, get into a fight of, like, compliments. And they're like, man, I hope you have a great day. Yeah, well, you know what? I hope you have a great week. Well, then your month better be full of great days. Well, how about your whole year, then? You know what? You smell really good. And that part was hilarious. I love that. Um, there was a couple other parts. I don't want to tell too many jokes. You just watch it. It's hilarious. But um, I loved... Uh, I think his name was Steve, the bad guy, the owner of the whole business. He was probably the funniest character. He was hilarious. And then um, Cassius Green had several funny lines. Uh, Cassius' his friend, once again, I forget his name. He had just great reactions to things. Things would be happening, and he'd be like, huh? And there was a lot of those great moments. I don't know why the light just went off. Light. Okay, the light's staying off. All right, fine. Blooper reel. Um, but overall, yeah, so really good character chemistry. I think the script could have used maybe one more rewrite. I'm not sure. 
I'm not a professional or anything, but I think this could have been a perfect movie. I love how it felt. It was very indie feeling. I loved how it felt. It had a Michelle Gondry joke in it that I died at. Um, but it felt like it could have been a 10 if it had one more rewrite. And where I'm at right now, I'm sitting at like maybe an 8. I'm not sure yet. I need to let it marinate a little bit. But it could have been perfect, and it's only really good. So, a lot of the times when movies are only really good when they could be perfect, I almost dislike them more than a just a flat, okay movie, because I see the potential and get frustrated by it. Um, but that's not a real reason to hate a movie or anything. But I... <laughs> this could have been perfect, and it wasn't, so uh, that's frustrating to me. But anyway... Um, I'm just rambling on at this point, repeating the same thing, so let me know in the comments below what you guys thought, and we can keep the conversation going. Did you like it? Did you see it? Did you know it was out? I didn't. So yeah, let me know in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.